All right, perfect. Welcome to the LiveCare Connector Life Platform Tour today. My name is Alex. I'm the Associate Product Marketing Manager here at LiveCare. I will be your host today to talk about what is a LiveCare Connector, some of its use cases, and how your organization can potentially benefit from using it. For those of you who are new here, welcome. Alacare is an end-to-end -end home and community care platform that manages the entire client lifecycle, including needs assessment, care plans, scheduling, visit and raw optimization, and visit verification. Now, joining us today is Wyatt, the senior solutions engineer here at Alacare, as well as a great speaker, of uh, Robert, senior vice president of data and technology from Purpose Care. So for those of you who don't know who Purpose Care is, from home care to home health, Purpose Care walks with clients and their families through the continent of community-based care, delivering services in a coordinated manner that enhances quality, reduces costs, and most importantly, provides the comfort and peace of mind that loved ones are being cared for appropriately. Now, with the introduction away, let's just go over a few quick housekeeping items uh, with all of you today. So again, welcome. So glad that you could join us. Thank you very much for taking out uh, time from your Thursday afternoon. Uh, to join us here at the Connector webinar today. Today's webinar is scheduled to last roughly around 45 minutes, including a QA session at the very end. Now, if we don't have time to answer all the questions, uh, one of our member of our team will follow up via email, and questions can be submitted via the Q&A button that you will probably already see on your screen throughout any time in this webinar. Now, all attendees will be muted and have their cameras off, and slides and recordings of this demo will be e uh, emailed within 72 hours. So if you have any colleagues who couldn't make it today, they will get a recording uh, and a copy of what we talked about today. Now with that, we'll jump right into the agenda today. So what are we gonna be covering today? We'll talk about the processes in home-based care today and tomorrow, and what challenges a lack of connector is set up to solve for agencies. Then we'll have Robert to talk about how connector is driving efficiencies at purpose care, where they will be, uh, Robert will be sharing a little bit more about how they're using Connector to improve workflows and deliver better care at their agency. Then we'll pass it over to Wyatt, the senior solutions engineer, to do a quick demo and for you folks to see how Connector works in action and some of the most popular use cases we have seen among our customers. Then at the very end, we'll have a Q&A session where we'll open up to the floor. If you have any questions, you can submit it throughout the webinar at any time and we'll go over them at the very end. Now, with that said, I just want to open up today's session uh, with something that I'm sure all of you can resonate uh, as I talk through it. In a landscape where every minute counts, home-based care agencies face an uphill battle juggling a myriad of manual, error-prone tasks that consume valuable time and resources. So I'm sure all of you here today experience this at your agency to a certain degree. Uh, this could be anything from scheduling appointments, documenting care, managing communication, all these tasks demand attention and effort. Now, unfortunately, many of these processes are burdened with inefficiencies, leaving folks like you guys uh, stretched thin. The pressure is palpable, right? Every missed detail or error could have significant consequences for both the agency and the individual that's supposed to be served. An industry where the quality of care is paramount, there's little room for error. But why is this such a prevalent issue? The answer lies in the complexity of the task at hand and the outdated systems in place. So manual processes are not only time consuming, but it's also very prone to human error, leading to inefficiencies that hinder productivity and impact the quality of care delivered. The landscape of home-based care agencies is really characterized by a constant struggle to balance the demands of providing quality care with the constraints of outdated processes and systems. So as we delve deeper into today's discussion, I just wanna want you guys to keep this backdrop in mind. With that said, I wanna open up a quick poll question to the floor to see how you folks are handling some aspects of your processes today. So at your organization, how much time do you estimate your staff spend to complete the client intake process for a single client? And we'll just give folks around 30 seconds to answer this question really quickly. All right, perfect. So I got the result just in. It looks like most of you folks are saying roughly around 15 to 30 minutes, which is really good. Uh, following that up, it's roughly around 30 to 45 minutes. And then we have more than 60 minutes for 13% of you. 
So I want to say that um, a lot of you folks are doing quite well uh, in terms of client intake process for a single client. But I just wanted you to keep in mind that, you know, as agencies grow and you try to take on more client, while that time frame might not seem like a really long time right now, it only staggers up as your agencies try to grow and take in more client. And what I'm really trying to get at is automating operation is crucial to the long-term growth of your agency. So let's delve deeper into why automating operations is not just a convenience, but it is actually a necessity for long-term growth and success of home-based care agencies. So consider these statistics. 57% of home-based care agencies spend up to three hours a day on administrative tasks. Guys, three hours a day. This staggering figure highlights the significant amount of time the agencies dedicate to manual ad lib work. Three hours may not seem like much at first glance, but when you really consider, uh, consider the cumulative impact over days, weeks, months, or even years, it becomes clear just how much time is being diverted away from what really matters, which is providing direct clear to clients. Now, on the other hand the side of things, 24% of visits are missed due to human scheduling errors. Misappointments not only disrupts the continuity of care, but also reflect poorly on the agency's reliability and professionalism. Now, in fact, missed visits occur in 5.5% of all home care appointments. Human errors in scheduling can lead to confusion and frustration for both clients and caregivers. And it could even potentially jeopardize the health and safety of those in need of care. So these numbers paint a really stark picture, I want to say, of the challenges agencies face when it comes to managing their operations. Manual processes not only consume valuable time, but also increase the likelihood of errors, leading to missed appointments and ultimately impacting the quality of care delivered to clients and your client care outcomes. So I just want to think about this. Are manual processes forcing your agency to allocate resources just to make it work? instead of focusing on delivering better care. The time and effort spent on manual tasks could be better utilized in providing personalized care to clients, improving outcomes, and driving growth for your agency. But as long as these inefficiencies persist, agency will continue to struggle to meet the demands of ever-evolving industry that you folks are in today. So as we move forward in our discussion, I want you to keep these challenges in mind. Automating operations isn't really just about making your agency's life easier. It's about empowering you to deliver better care, improve client satisfaction, and ultimately drive long-term growth and efficiencies. With that said, how is Alacare set out to address this challenge we see today? It's really all about, it brings me back to the start of today's live platform tour, which is Alacare Connector, right? And Alacare Connector is not just another automation tool. It's really an automation tool designed to streamline your operations by providing customized workflows that suits your uh, individual agency's needs. It's about customized automation workflows, right? Alacare Connector offers tailored automation workflows designed to fit the unique needs of your agency. Now, this could be anything from scheduling, documentation, and communication, anything. Our platform seamlessly integrates across Alacare and third-party platform, ensuring a smooth and efficient operation. Now, it also saves time and resources for you. By leveraging a Lacker connector, you can say goodbye to manual error-prone tasks that eat away at your agency's time and resources. With automation in place, you'll see a significant reduction in admin burdens, allowing your team to focus on what truly matters, which again, is really about delivering exceptional care to your clients. And last but not least, it's really about enhancing efficiency at scale. Efficiency shouldn't be limited to just a few tasks. It should be permeating every aspect of your agency's operation. And with Alacra Connector, you can scale your efficiency across your entire organization. And this can drive improvement in productivity, accuracy, and ultimately client satisfaction. So what I wanted to say is Alacra Connector is really the key to unlocking efficiency and effectiveness in your agency's operation. It's really not just about making things easier at your organization. It's really about enabling your agency to thrive in today's fast-paced landscape. Now, with that said, I know it may be a little bit hard to imagine how Connector can improve your agency's operation without really seeing real-life examples, which is why we have invited Robert, the Senior VP of Data and Technology at Purpose Care, to talk a little bit more about how their organization is uh, leveraging Adalcare Connector to drive uh, efficiency at Purpose Care. 
Now with that, I'll pass it over to Robert. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. Um, so uh, as Alex said, my name is Robert Kalodenko and I lead uh, the data and technology organization at Purpose Care. Purpose Care is uh, an organization that essentially was created at the beginning of 2022. And at the over the past two years or so, we've we've grown to about four states, multiple service lines, and 30 locations. Um, as Alex kind of talks about using technology to scale operations at, at Purpose Care, my role is really thinking about how do we supplement our teams and how do we use technology efficiently? And how do we um, thinking of, think about at, at the core of our business, we are a services business. We are not a technology business. But how do we use technology to make our teams more efficient, make things more consistent, and ultimately help automate things so caregivers could spend the time with clients and with patients, as opposed to thinking about doing documentation and doing more of the administrative aspect of their roles. So uh, I lead our, our data and technology organization, which is comprised of, of really three core departments. That's data. That's our business systems, which is inclusive of EMRs, and then that's our core IT. So Alex, if we go to the next slide, um, Alex, Alex kind of introduced the concept of purpose care, but at purpose care, really, if you kind of if you if you move a little bit away from the boilerplate text that you see on the slide here, and you, you think about us, what we do is we coordinate care for dual eligibles. So we have two core service lines, which is home care and home health. We typically in a market will start with home care. We're in the house three, four, five times a week. We are taking care of clients. We're helping them with their activities of daily living. And as clients start to trend downwards, instead of having clients go into the ED, go to the hospitals, you think about a value-based world, we're more focused on how do we get the clients the skilled care that they need at the right time, at the right place from the right caregiver. And so what we do is, you know, we partner with organizations like Ally Care to help build technology to help assist in that process. So at the at the core and the fundamental of Purpose Care, we coordinate care for dual eligibles and we try to enable our, our team members with technology. We don't think technology is ever going to replace our team members, but we do what we can to supplement them and help automate as much as we can. So if we go to the next slide, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to talk about a specific connector workflow that our team has has built in partnership with Eli Care over the past uh, couple months or so. But I think before we do that, I think it's, it's incredibly important to level set because if I start saying, hey, inconsistent manual effort for changing condition, people would probably be like, what the heck does that mean? I have no idea what the hell that means. So as we think about the concept of changing condition, again, as you think about purpose care, really working with you know some of the sick and most vulnerable clients in the country and the US here. Um, what we do is we have a caregiver that is in the house every day. They're there four or five, six times a week. They're helping the clients. They know them. They have this personal relationship. Our caregivers at the same time, right? They're they're not skilled caregivers. They are doing the activities of daily living. They're helping to cut fingernails. They're helping to give baths. They're helping to do grocery shopping. They're helping with just normal activities but they know our clients. And so one of the things that's incredibly important for us is we think about coordinating care as we think about keeping clients out of the hospital. Yes, we can build predictive models. We can partner with a lot care and building predictive models, but there's a human element where a, a caregiver can say, hey, something looks off with our client today. I want to escalate that to a nurse, to a case manager, to whoever it is, and really get this client the help that they need. So what we did is we partnered with Eliacare and said, hey, you know, we have somebody in the house all the time. We want to give them a structured way to report that a change in condition is occurring with our client. And then we want a specific workflow to kind of go through, which we'll go through on the next slide. Um, we want a specific workflow to really help drive that operational process. So we chose kind of to partner with Eliacare on change in condition because you could, you could see it here. What was happening before we had a lie care, before we even had a lie care as our EMR vendor, or even after we implemented a lie care, but didn't have this connector workflow, you'd have a caregiver that is in the client's house. They say, hey, Robert looks off today. Robert's refusing to eat today. Robert's refusing to go to the bathroom today, whatever it is. And what they would do is they would call their case manager. We have uh, case managers that are doing supervisory visits every 60 days. Um, it is a more skilled clinician that is actually managing the case. 
that's very specific to our Indiana workflow. In other states, we don't have nurse supervision. Um, and so the thing that is, you know, was really helpful about us partnering with Eli here is we said, hey, here's how we want to do it in Indiana. But in Ohio, we want to do it a little bit differently. And here we want to do it a little bit differently as well. And so what we did is we kind of said, hey, caregiver notices a changing condition. They're going to call whoever they're going to call in the case of Indiana here. They're going to call the case manager. In the case of uh, Michigan, they're going to call the branch manager. In the case of Ohio, they're going to call a different nurse that's actually not employed by us. But essentially what was happening is the caregivers would go and they would call whoever it was. They would try to get a hold of them. And then essentially they'd cross their fingers and hope that something would happen. So caregiver knows it's changing condition. They would call whoever it is. And then either they didn't get their call answered. They would reach somebody, but they didn't actually know that follow through happened or the client would share feedback days later, like, no, oh, I never heard from anybody. Or a caregiver would reach the client. They'd start to work with the client and documentation was spotty. So we had a real problem with, hey, we're, you know, in Indiana, we have 2,500 clients today. We have a lot of different case managers. We have thousands of caregivers that are kind of across the state. And we had really no consistent process. So if we go to the next slide, what you'll see is we actually essentially built a change in condition workflow in Care that is fundamentally powered by Connector. And as you look at this and you think about this, where it is a caregiver completes a CIC form, that form, is a custom built form that we built with Eli Care. Based on the specific inputs and the specific values from that form, that will actually trigger a downstream workflow. If a client says, hey, no, Robert looks great, which happens about you know, 80 or 90% of the visits that we have, they say, there is no issues with Robert today. No changing condition met, workflow ends. Nothing happens after that. But if the caregiver notices and says, hey, you know, Robert, Robert looks like he has a new wound on his skin or Robert's not eating as much or talking as much as he normally does, what ends up happening is a when they submit the form, there's actually a connector job that runs in the background. It says, hey, we noticed a positive result. What we're actually going to do is we're going to create a task in Care using the native task functionality that Care has, and we're going to assign that to the case manager. And how do we know that? We know who the case manager is based on the services that are actually entered in Care. We know who's doing those new nurse supervisory visits. We know who the case manager is based on the relationships within care. And so what we do is instead of a, you know, an HHA or a PCA for us saying, hey, they're going to call the case manager, the care connector workflow actually automatically generates a task in the application, assigns that task to whoever the case manager is, and then sends that case manager alert and says, hey, you have something to do. So now what we've done is instead of somebody trying to call you know, whoever they can get a hold of, call your best friend, the age old problem. The system now will automatically generate a task. It'll assign it to that uh, branch manager, case manager. And then what happens is um, that branch manager will actually go out and talk to the client. They'll say, hey, you know, what's going on? We heard from the HHA. Our branch managers are also RNs. Um, we heard from the HHA what's going on. The branch manager will do a more skilled clinical assessment. And then they will actually determine if we need another level of care or if we're done there. So as you could kind of see, right, there's so many different terminal points for us. It's It could be a branch manager has to do something. It could be a case manager has to do something. It could be this or this or this and that and this and that. And then ultimately what ends up happening at the end of this whole thing is we want all this documented in the chart. When the state comes in for an audit and they said, hey, we saw Robert had a change in condition. What happened? We want all of this information to actually be linked. So we want a form, we want a task, we want another form, and we want another form in care that actually has all bundled together and is all documented in the same place in a chart. And the care connector actually does all of that for us. So as you think about this workflow, you think about all the different hands that are in the pot, all of the different hands that are either touching or talking to a client, all of that now is centralized and all of that is fundamentally automated through the back end of Connector. You're going to see the term API on here, application programming interface. I'm assuming why it's going to go into a bit more detail on what that means. But really what got us excited and, and why we went with Eliacare and then we went with Eliacare and use Connector um, is it, APIs use modern engineering uh, fundamental technologies that were important to us. 
it allows us, as we think about this workflow in Indiana versus Ohio, it allows us to really use best practices, but also the flexibility that APIs offer. It allows us to say, hey, in Indiana, do this, in Ohio, do that, and do this in Michigan, and then do this in Illinois when we're ready to do it in Illinois. And really, that is why we love Connectors. It helped us standardize. It helped us supplement uh, the caregivers and make their, their jobs more efficient. Um, but then at the end of the day, it gave us the ability from a back-end perspective to make this seamless, to make it feel like really from the time a change in condition is reported all the way to when the client's note is generated in their profile, the people who are actually doing the work day to day don't actually feel that there's an API that's triggering in the background, that there's a queue that's running that's saying, hey, these are all the events that are happening. Make sure you generate a task. Everything is just happening automatically. And it makes our lives and our caregivers' lives so much easier than it was before. So if you go to the next slide, you'll see you know, a little bit about um, the wins that we had. Before Connector, limited accountability, pretty much no accountability. Uh, documentations were really up to however the clinician wanted to do it. If they got a hold of the client, we'd see a change in condition note come up. If they had four missed calls and they never talked to them, there would never be any sort of documentation that anybody identified a change in condition. What's important for us as we think about it is what are the actions that we are taking and what are the outcomes that are occurring? As you think about wanting to coordinate care for dual eligibles and saying, hey, we actually keep people out of the hospital. We make sure that they don't end up in the ED. This now gives us the ability to prove that. Um, as we think about driving outcomes, this really helps us think about, okay, are we, are we giving the client the right care at the right time? And if not, are we getting the right people internally here at Purpose Care or are we making the right um, referrals externally to make sure that our clients ultimately end up living a healthier life? So you can kind of see, right, as, as just an example here of how we use the Ally Care Connector and the efficiencies and just the, you know, the overall better outcomes that we've seen just with this one change in condition workflow. If you look at me and you, you, you start to, to think and hear me talk, which I know it's only been about 12 minutes or so, um, I get really excited about this stuff. There's just so much opportunity, especially in this industry, for us to automate things to make caregivers' lives easier. I think a lot of people will share the problem that, that we have at Purpose Care is not that we don't have enough referrals, it's that we don't have enough caregivers. And so what Connector has allowed us to do is it allows us to free up our caregivers' times for them to take on new clients or ultimately to make them happier, to help us retain them, to give them a better quality uh, of working conditions. So for, for us at Purpose Care, we focus today on this webinar of just the change in condition workflow. But I think why it's going to go through after me and demo a couple other things, there's a lot of other things that we're thinking about using Connector for, things that we've actually signed up and we're, we're starting projects on. Um, Purpose Care uses Salesforce as their CRM. When we use Salesforce, we track that from a marketing perspective, looking for clients in our different markets. What our sales and marketing teams do in the different um, markets that we're in is they create opportunities in Salesforce that have a lot of the different intake information. So Alex had the uh, poll question that said, how much time are you guys doing? How much time are you spending doing intake? Well, what happens today at Purpose Care is our, uh, our field staff well, actually, our marketing staff will go out. They will find a client. They'll actually write all of the intake information within the opportunity in Salesforce. And then, as you can guess, what they do is they actually take 90% of that information and they'll re-enter it into a lie care. And so what we're doing is we're actually working on a connector project that says, hey, here's an opportunity with all the associated client information, run a connector job, and then that will actually populate the intake form and the client's demographics within a lie care. The other thing as we think about it is, we have an HRIS system. We use ADP as our HR vendor. When an employee is created, an employee always starts within the HR system. And so what we're doing is we're partnering with Care. When an employee's record is created within our HR system, again, instead of double entering all of that demographic information, all of that license information, all of the information that's already in the HRIS, we're actually going to use Connector to actually generate employee records within Care. So we get really excited about our partnership with Ally Care and our opportunity to, you know, automate a lot of the administrative stuff that at the end of the day stinks. Um, and we're really, really excited about, you know, what we've achieved with changing condition. Um, 
what we're going to achieve with changing condition from an outcomes perspective. And then really all of our future projects that we've scoped so far with Connector. And then even the things that I can't think about in the future, we are, we are genuinely excited. But hopefully that gives everybody um, a perspective on how Purpose Care is using Connector, how it's live today in the two states, how it has multilingual support across English, Spanish, and Arabic, all the different things that were important to us from a changing condition perspective. Uh, the Aliyah team was able to partner with us and was able to build the solution that we needed. So I can talk forever about this. Uh, if anybody has questions, please feel free to reach out, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and keep us on schedule and I'm going to hand it back to Alex uh, to continue on in the show. Perfect. Thank you very much, Robert, for sharing your experience with Connector. Uh, great to hear you're having great experience and Connector is really helping driving efficiency at Purpose Kit. Now, with that concrete example, I'm sure all of you now have a little bit of a better grasp of how a like connector can help your agency drive efficiency. So really, what are some of the results of before and after implementing a like connector, right? It's really about three things. It's about enhanced operational efficiencies, right? Where workflows are optimized at scale and really saving time spent on manual work in key areas of care coordination. It's about improved client experience and retention, right? Client benefit from a faster time to care, timely communication, and greater transparency in their care journey. And last but not least, it's about increased employee satisfaction, where staff will be able to benefit from reduced admin burdens for more streamlined workflow, allowing them to really focus on what matters at the end of the day, which is delivering quality care to clients. Now, with that, I just want to open up another poll question to the floor. At your organization, how much time does your staff spend to remind employees and clients of upcoming visits each week? And we'll just open up that question for roughly around 30 seconds. All right, perfect. So I do see that the top leading answer is none. We don't remind employees or clients of upcoming visits, which takes up roughly around 26% of our responses. And following by that, it's 25% sitting at more than two hours per week. Um, so Again, um, this is uh, just of a telltale sign of how, you know, a lack of connector could help automate and reduce time or even implement workflows that you don't currently do, but could really benefit your employees and clients. Uh, you know, some as you grow your agency and employ more employees and clients, um, the time you're going to be spending on some of these manual workflows is, is just only going to increase exponentially. And the benefits of having upcoming visit reminders I'm sure I don't have to go on and elaborate that. A lack of connector can do that for you. In fact, we have some of the common, uh, most common and popular use cases for lack of connector today that we will be demoing for you. So some of the common connector use cases that we have include client intake automation, late clock in and clock out notifications, and visit reminders. And specifically for visit reminders, we actually have an amazing case study with Unreal customers who after implementing this particular connected workflow, they were able to save a stunning 50 hours a week for their agency on how much time they're spending on app work. So if you're interested, we'll send out a follow-up with the resources attached where you can take a closer look to the case study that we've put together so you can learn how these specific popular use cases for connector can actually benefit your agency in tangible ways.